How do you buy products from Alibaba and sell them on Amazon? Hi, my name's Ollie, and today I'm teaming up with AMZ Scout to bring you a very in-depth tutorial about how to import products from China and sell them on Amazon. Alibaba is the place to source inventory. Like if you're interested in e-commerce, if you're interested in selling physical products online or maybe even offline, then what Alibaba does is it actually gives you a, a directory of almost all the factories in China, right? So it's a huge opportunity, a great place to source from. However, like any marketplace out there, um, we need to avoid the risks. We need to not get scammed. And we really need to make sure that you get the good quality stock that you're actually looking for, right? So by doing this properly, it can be an unbelievable opportunity for you. I mean, you can get products ridiculously cheap that can sell for crazy margins. And we just need to make sure that you go about it the right way. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do. If you're interested in who I am, so this is the first video I've done with uh, AMZ Scout on their channel. But uh, I run an Amazon business myself. I also coach uh, e-commerce business owners. Um, I've sold seven figures worth of products online, uh, on Amazon, other e-commerce platforms as well. Um, and today I've helped over 10,000 paying customers build Amazon businesses, most of them in the UK, but also people from all over the world as well. So let's start off with what is Alibaba? Well, this is a good question. Like the way I see it is it's a marketplace. It's really, it's a directory. So Alibaba isn't, you know, just one manufacturer who make loads and loads and loads of different products. Alibaba is a directory of factories who make products and it gives them a place to advertise their products online. So it's the number one most trusted directory of manufacturers in China. In fact, it's been featured on like Forbes and basically if you type it into Google, you'll see tons of really reputable search results of people who use the platform. Now you can find anything on there, um, literally anything that you want to sell, right? You can find it on Alibaba. So why do so many Amazon sellers use it? Well, number one is because it's extremely, um, ex extremely useful, right? It gets all of your suppliers in one place, gives you an easy way to just message them, a safe way to actually connect with them and make your payments. And you can see before you send any money to anyone, if the company is going to be reliable or not. Now, one thing I, I get from a lot of new Amazon sellers is, you know, the question, if everybody's using Alibaba, and we're all seeing the same suppliers and we're all basically sourcing similar products. Does that mean it's too saturated? And does that mean that you're just going to be buying the same stuff as everybody else? Well, it's a valid point. And sometimes you will be buying stuff from the same supplier as other sellers, but really Alibaba is a directory of the whole of China, right? So when people worry about saturation with Alibaba, makes me laugh because it's like saying, is sourcing from China going to get saturated? So is Alibaba safe? I can answer this question by asking you a question. Is eBay safe? Well, you'd probably say to me, yeah, eBay is pretty safe. You know, most of the time you'll place an order, you'll get the product that you ask for, you'll leave feedback and everything will go very, very smoothly. And there's a sense of trust on the platform. It's exactly the same with Alibaba, right? It's mostly safe. However, just like with eBay, there are some things that you probably want to look out for that could potentially go wrong. There are some suppliers who aren't real reputable uh, companies and they just create, um, an account on Alibaba to scam people. So if you understand how to avoid those type of uh, scammers and focus just on the really good quality suppliers, 
then um, you'll have a much easier time and it's actually very simple to get connected with uh, a very good quality supplier so there's a few things you can do right that Alibaba have done to help you find good quality suppliers one of them is their trade assurance system opt in for trade assurance pay a very small fee and then if anything goes wrong with your order let's say you know the product isn't as described or it gets lost in shipping or something else happens and you just don't get the stuff you paid for you can actually apply for Alibaba to give you a refund and then they will make the supplier give you the money back what I recommend is always look for suppliers who allow you to use trade assurance when you make the purchase and this proves that they really are offering good quality stock and they'll back it up by um, getting Alibaba to step in if there are any issues there's also a few other things you can do to avoid scams a verified supplier basically means that Alibaba have gone to their premises seen that they are based where they say they are based basically they're just a legitimate supplier also they have the gold uh, supplier system as well where suppliers can pay each year to be part of the gold program and suppliers who have been in that program for several years you know if they're paying I think it's a few thousand per year to be a gold supplier then you can bet that they're a real business all right because someone who's trying to fly by the night and make a few grand is not going to pay thousands every single year to be part of the gold supplier program so do you need a business to buy from Alibaba? Now, a lot of people know that this is a, a B2B uh, marketplace, right? It's a marketplace that's been designed for businesses to buy from other businesses. So a lot of new Amazon sellers think, well, I haven't got a company yet. I'm, maybe I'm just an individual buyer. Can I still buy stuff from Alibaba? The answer is yes. You don't have to have a company. In fact, m more often than not, the suppliers in Alibaba don't really care much about you. They don't care if you've had any experience. They don't care if you have a company. They're not bothered. Like they're a business. If you're saying to them, you know, I'm interested in giving you $5,000 for some stock, they're gonna be all ears. They're gonna be very receptive and interested in what you have to say. So what about taxes? Do you have to pay taxes when you order from Alibaba? Well, there's no sales tax on purchases that you make from China, like there are in America and kind of with VAT in Europe. So that doesn't exist. You don't have to pay taxes in China for the sales that are made uh, in China. However, when you import products from China to America or to Europe, you will have to pay import taxes. So for example, in the UK, it's import VAT, which is 20% on top of value of the goods and shipping insurance and also duty as well which is a varying percentage based on the type of product you're selling they have a similar thing in America as well and there's a fee for the tests they have to do in customs and some other things as well so you don't really have to worry about that part until you're actually shipping the goods to your country other than that there shouldn't be any taxes so let's move on to the big questions on everyone's mind what are the best products to buy from Alibaba? So fortunately, as I'm partnering with AMZ Scout, they actually offer a ton of tools to help you with this process. If you log into the AMZ Scout app, um, you'll see they've actually got quite a few tools for you to use. But when we're really looking for products, the first one you should have a play around with is the product database because what they've done is they've actually scraped loads of products from the Amazon marketplace they've got the data okay inside the app and so what you can do is search through all of the products um, that are on Amazon and you can refine by a load of filters that you can use to display the types of products you'd like to sell so if we go into the product database I can kind of show you how it works so let me show you so I've set some filters already um, and for me personally like there's some categories which I just prefer um, to sell within right I like home and garden I like home and kitchen I like pet supplies I like baby products I like stationery 
I find that these categories are actually the easiest products to sell. They don't often require approval on Amazon. Um, they're not going to cause you too many issues at customs, you know, when you're getting the products cleared. You're not going to need many safety certificates like you would with toys and games and maybe some electronics. Um, the products don't break easily. You know, they're quite easy products to actually source. So if you want to just copy this uh, list of categories to, to input when you're searching, that would be a great place to start. Home and garden, home and kitchen, pet supplies, baby products, and stationery. Right, so you could probably screenshot that. I'll take a note of it. You can set other filters as well. So, as well as categories, you could maybe include a keyword if you want to. I don't know, sell products that are made of wood. You could just type in the word wood if you want to. Some people love uh, eco products, so you could maybe type in the word eco and it would bring up loads of eco products, for example. Um, you can also set the price. So I like to generally aim for products that are above 20 pounds, just because it gives you enough uh, room to make a great profit margin, you know? Um, so that's something you can do, but you could do a bit higher, a bit lower, totally up to you. Generally within the 20 to 60 pounds range or dollars range is, is, is really uh, the perfect place to start. With reviews, I, look to, I like to look for products that don't have too many sellers with more than 500 reviews. So you can set the filter here to have a range of products that only have zero to 500 reviews listed on them, right? That's a good indication of how competitive the marketplace is, how established the sellers are in the niche. And basically the less reviews there are, the less competitive the niche will be. Um, you can set things like revenue, right? So maybe you might want uh, products that are doing a minimum of £3,000 a month or $3,000 a month. By the way, whichever marketplace you want to sell in, you can actually choose up here. For me, it's in the UK. You can choose. It's basically all the same thing. And I've put up to 50k, although I wouldn't complain if my product was doing more than that, of course, right? You can set these how you like. So yeah, there's plenty of filters. Uh, these are the ones I like to use. And then once you've set them, hit find products and you actually get a load of products um, that have been scraped off Amazon and that meet all of your filters. And this is really handy because it saves you time having to go through millions, like literally millions of search results on Amazon. It just shows you the ones that are already selling really, really well. Like for example, look at this. So let's check this out. So this is a, a, some kind of rug or something. Okay, something I never thought would really sell very well. And as we can see from the stats here, it's doing 23,000 pounds per month in sales. A little simple purple rug that you put in your hallway. Not too bad, right? 943 sales per month. And I've got some other information here as well. Uh, the price, 120 pounds, that looks like. Let's have a look. Oh no, the ratio of how much revenue a seller makes per one review. Interesting. I didn't even know about that metric. That's pretty useful. Where is the price? Did they list it on here yet? Don't know if they did. What we can do is click on the listing, open it up, and then we can see a bit more info on the public Amazon page. Here we are selling for $26.95. Not too bad. So yeah, it's a really, really useful way to just sort through the results and you can have a look and see the type of thing that you'd be interested in selling. Another thing that I like to do um, is once I found a product that I think might be good, so let's say, for example, this rug might be good, um, you can actually have a look at the generic keyword for this product and look at the niche, right? So this is a, a living room rug, okay? living room area rug. And this is just showing us one product, uh, this particular product here that is a rug, right? If we type in living room area rug into Amazon, you can see all the different rugs that are available. And then you can use the AMZ Scout Chrome extension to analyze the niche as a whole and actually see, you know, if you were to launch one of these rugs, what type of sellers you'd be competing with. You know, are they gonna be 
national brands that might be a little bit hard to compete with or are they all just individual sellers are they very established is it a very competitive niche or uh, is it a new up and coming niche where you have lots of room to compete if you sort by revenue you can see you know how many uh, sellers are doing very very well in the niche if you sort by reviews you can see how many sellers are <clears throat> very established and generally the more reviews they have the longer they've been selling and the easier it will be for them to get sales and the harder it will be for you to compete so we want lots of revenue ideally and not too many reviews by the way if you want to get a little bit more information on how to find products because it's a really big topic um, and I probably can't cover it in too much detail in this video then in the link in the description if you check out the AMZ Scout plugin when you grab it you'll actually get a whole course that teaches you exactly how to find products included with the software so not only do you get um, you know access to the web app, web app with the database also the chrome extension and everything you also get courses and master classes on how to find products and how to launch them on amazon so definitely check out the link in the description grab amz scout have a play around with it and you'll even get that course that walks you through how to find hot products cool so let's say you found a product that you're interested in selling right something that you're thinking you know what I think I can make some money with this. Well, what do you do next? How do we actually find it on Alibaba? Well, one way you could do it, and let's say you're looking at this product, which is the living room area rug. You can open up the AMZ Scout app. And with the product open here, you can click search suppliers on Alibaba. Pretty cool because um, it actually integrates with the app. And let's have a look. So if I open it, when there's multiple search results here we go it opens inside the chrome extension and you can actually sort all of the suppliers on alibaba within the amz scout app so for example you can choose the country you want to source from let's say we want to source from china choose the currency usd is usually a good idea um, because they're chinese suppliers usually list their products in usd Choose the price range. So let's say I'm willing to pay, you know, up to $20 per unit for my rug. Let's say we probably want to order 100 units. So select the minimum order quantity, or in other words, the minimum amount you can buy from the supplier. And then, like I said, we want suppliers who have trade assurance and who are verified. So we know that they're trustworthy. You can just hit search and you can have a look at some of the search results that come up and see if there's anything here that actually matches what you're looking for it's just a bit of an easier way to look through some of the alibaba results another option you have is just to go to alibaba and you can just type in the name of the product so let's have a look you can actually click on one of the products you're looking at and click find on alibaba that's another option you have and here we go it's just brought up pretty much products that are kind of similar to this one here they're almost exactly the same actually and as you can see a lot of these people you know they're sourcing the products for i don't know maybe 15 dollars each and they're selling them for 46 pounds 99 which is about 60 dollars so this stuff can be extremely profitable if you find a product that's going to sell really, really well. In fact, let's have a look and see what this product's doing right now. Yeah, they're making £25,000 per month selling this thing. Probably doing maybe a 30% profit margin. Let's say they're doing a 20% margin. They're doing £5,000 a month in profit selling this rug. So this can be extremely profitable if you know which niche to enter into. So let's have a look at some of these suppliers. I mean, you know, they're all selling different designs of rugs. All right. If you click on one of them, let's say we want somebody who's got the gold supplier. This person's in the gold program for two years. Um, they're verified and they use trade assurance. You can take a look at the company 
and make a decision on whether you'd actually like to order from them. Right? This shows you all the different products that they offer. Um, if you click on the picture, it takes you straight to that listing of that product that you're looking at. There's a button here that says contact supplier or you can even call them and it gives you a little bit of information about them as well. Different types of uh, payments they um, receive and things like that. One thing I like to check actually when I'm looking at a supplier is the reviews for the company. So if you find this little box here on any listing on Alibaba, you can see the rating that they have from reviews from people who've ordered products from them. Just like when you're ordering on eBay or Amazon or whatever. So if you click that, you can see recent people who've dealt with the supplier. And obviously if they've got a good rating, it's a very good chance that they're very reputable, very trustworthy, and you can judge for yourself whether it would be a good idea to order from them or not. So this person's got 44.6 out of 5 reviews. Uh, and that's pretty good. Like That's not too bad at all. Obviously, there's a couple of disgruntled customers. You know, there always will be. Um, everything's gone very well. So I would feel happy ordering from this supplier. So let's say you found your niche, right? You found which product you want to sell. Let's say you found a supplier you might want to buy from. How do you actually place the order? Well, it's pretty simple, right? First thing you obviously need to do is sign up to Alibaba. So when you're on the Alibaba website, if you just go to the top right, there's a thing here that says sign in or join free. Okay, so if you just click join free, it's totally free to sign up. You might need to uh, change the language here to English because they might assume that you speak uh, Chinese. Unfortunately, I don't. Pick the country you're based in. I'm based in Sweden. You choose wherever you're based. You're actually a buyer because you're going to be buying from these suppliers, right? So choose buyer as your role. Enter all your information. Company name. If you don't have one, just enter anything in there. Enter what you'd like your company to be called, right? And it should be fine. Um, and then click agree and register. And within a couple seconds, your account should be ready to go. Then, once you've got your account ready, it might take a while for them to verify you sometimes, so you might have to hang out for a few days, but um, you know, in the meantime, you can start to build a list of suppliers that you'd like to actually contact, right? And um, you know, what I like to do is, is look at all of the factors when you're making a decision about who to message. All right, so first of all, look at the product that they actually offer. All right, so is it a nice design? You know, and do they have other designs? Um, one thing to mention is that the designs that are listed on the Alibaba website doesn't represent everything that they can make for you. These suppliers can source the materials. They can source new design blueprints for new products. They can source new dyes and colors. Um, and they could pretty much create everything and customize it for you how you like. So just because they don't have the exact thing that you want listed on Alibaba on the website, it's always worth reaching out to them and asking them, you know, what other things they can offer. So take a look and for all the suppliers that you think they might have, you know, a chance to uh, offer you what you want, shoot them a message, hit contact supplier. Um, obviously once you signed in, it comes up with a page where you can enter a quick message. So my approach when I'm contacting suppliers is contact as many as humanly possible. In fact, we only really want to be buying from suppliers who are verified gold suppliers uh, with trade assurance. However, when I'm messaging, I just go crazy. I message 30, 40, 50, 60 suppliers sometimes and just see what comes back. And then I can make my decisions about who's got the best price, Who's going to give me the fairest minimum order quantity so I don't have to order, you know, a thousand pieces. I can just order 50 or 100. Who's got the best designs? Uh, who can modify the product for me? Who can add my logo? You know, you can make a decision on who's the best supplier to go with once you've got all the quotes in from the emails that you've sent out. So my advice is message as many suppliers as you possibly can. And remember, before making your decision, you want to ask them as many questions as possible, right? So you might want to message them on the Alibaba 
uh, messaging service. They have like an inbuilt inbox. Or you could reach out to them on another platform. In fact, many suppliers will uh, ask you to speak with them on Skype or on WhatsApp or on uh, WeChat is another popular app as well. So if they ask you, just say yes and go and chat to them because that's usually just where they feel comfortable chatting and you can really get to know a supplier. In fact, what I like to do uh, with my suppliers is actually call them on the phone and speak to them on the phone, you know, on Skype or Zoom or some other kind of program like that because then you can see that, number one, they're a human being just like you, right? Um, they're trustworthy and you can start to build a bit of rapport and when you have rapport with someone and they trust you, they tend to give you best prices they tend to treat you a little bit better and you're not just a random stranger on the internet anymore um, you've actually had a conversation with them uh, on the phone so it actually gives you a few benefits if you can do that as well now one thing i always recommend doing you know let's say you've got 50 60 messages sent out to suppliers you've got quotes back before you go out get really excited and order 500 units from china always order a very small amount first this is my personal strategy so i'll place an order of maybe 50 units for a product get it shipped over from china to the uk or us wherever i'm selling it with express shipping so this is amazing because you can get a product shipped over in five days sometimes and it's not too expensive right it'll be a few hundred dollars or something for the shipping and you can just see if the product sells, list it on Amazon, see if it sells. Um, so this is actually a great step because you can see the quality of the product. Um, you can see if customers like it, you can see what reviews you get before you go ahead and spend thousands on a big order. If you know, you're not willing to do a test batch and you do want to start with a bigger order or you need to because your company is saying to you, you know, buy a thousand units or whatever, you can you should always start at least with a sample just one piece of the product get it shipped over by express shipping um, and you can see the quality of the product before you go ahead and place a big order also when you order this sample the great thing about it is you can see how good the supplier actually was like were they uh, good at communicating with you were they flexible uh, did they get back to you quickly did the sample arrive safely? Did they give you the thing they wanted? Because if they can't even get a sample right, then placing a big order um, is going to be an absolute nightmare. So always start with a sample or a test batch. Now, one thing to mention um, with Alibaba is please avoid buying counterfeit products. Now, on most of these websites in China, you will find Nike sports shoes you will find iPhones, uh, you will find um, other technology products, toys, clothes from these big brands that we all know and love, right? Disney, Nintendo, Sony. The only thing all of these products will have in common is that they'll all be fake. They're fake counterfeit goods. So please, if you ever see a product with a named brand on it in China, never ever ever order it it doesn't matter if it's from alibaba dhgate aliexpress wish regardless if you sell counterfeit goods on amazon it is the quickest way to get your account instantly shut down whether you meant to do it whether you did it intentionally or not so if you see a brand or anything that's looking like it's trying to imitate a big famous brand then please stay away Okay, so how do we make the payment? Let's say we've got loads and loads and loads of quotes from suppliers. We've gone back and forth with them, maybe on WeChat or WhatsApp, and now we wanna place an order. How do we actually do that? Well, there's many ways you can do it. The best way to do it is to place the order through the Alibaba website, right? There'll be a button, when you're messaging the supplier back and forth, there'll be a button you can press to actually place the order. And you can check the box that says trade assurance. This will have Alibaba protecting you through the process of getting your stock shipped uh, to your country. All right, so you pay a little fee and if anything goes wrong, you're covered. So that's the number one option. But sometimes for some reason you know, or another, it's just not possible. Maybe 
uh, the supplier doesn't accept it or maybe there's some other reason that you just can't do that. Um, so should you ever place an order if you're not paying through the Alibaba system? Well, the answer is yes, if you do it a certain way and if you trust your supplier. So another option you can use is PayPal. Now, if you pay your supplier via PayPal, a lot of Chinese suppliers don't like it because it takes them a long time to actually get the money um, into their account from their PayPal account for some reason. So quite often they don't want you to use PayPal. You can always ask though, and if that if you use PayPal and you use buyer uh, protection on PayPal, then again, you're covered as long as um, you pay through the PayPal platform. So that's one thing you can do. If you really trust the supplier, you can pay via TT, which is a bank transfer, where you actually just manually send the, give your bank the Chinese company's bank information and you transfer wire the money to their bank. I would only ever do this once you've already placed a couple of orders from your supplier and you know that they're a real trustworthy company um, because that way much 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 less likely you're going to get scammed there's a couple other payment options you can use such as western union and i would never ever go anywhere near western union because it's pretty much like giving someone a briefcase full of cash with no receipt there is no way you can get your money back if you get scammed using Western Union. And that's why most of the scammers on Alibaba ask you to use Western Union when you make the payment. So definitely avoid that one. Cool, so now you know how to place the order. Well, what about getting all of this stock shipped from the manufacturer into your Amazon account? Well, this is where things get a little bit complicated, although once you figure it out, it's not too difficult. There's many ways you can do it. Now, if you're ordering less than 100 kilograms of stock, you can use express shipping to, sh to ship the products to you. And this is really the easiest way to do it. If you're doing a test batch, if you're getting a sample or just a small amount of stock, or maybe your stock's just really small and light, um, like for example, you can sell things like nut milk bags on Amazon, which weigh probably about a gram each. And you can fit thousands and thousands of them into a tiny cardboard box. Well, then you'd use express shipping. And this is the easiest way to do it because you can use a company such as DHL um, or UPS or FedEx or TNT, all these couriers that we already know how to use. You just sign up to the website, place the order, or you can get the Chinese supplier to do this. and the courier will pick up the product from the manufacturer and deliver it all the way to your door. And then you can send it on to your Amazon account. So that's the easiest way to, to get stock. However, if you're ordering more than 100 kilograms worth of stock, then uh, you can't use express shipping anymore. It's just not gonna be viable. It'd be way too expensive and they probably won't even allow it. So what do you do then? Well, there's, there's two other ways you can um, order stock, maybe even three. So the first one is air freight. Okay, so you can use air freight to get your stock shipped from China. And this is where you get your products onto an airplane um, and delivered from um, the Chinese port to your port in your country. And you'll need to arrange the shipping from the Chinese manufacturer to the port and also from the port in your country to you. So one great way to do this is to use a freight forwarder and they can actually organize all of this stuff. They can organize the shipping from the Chinese manufacturer to the port, to your port via plane, and then to you, or maybe even directly into your Amazon account. Another option is to use sea shipping, right? If you have really heavy stock or just a lot of it, um, and it's big and it's bulky, sea shipping takes longer, it can take four, five, six weeks, but it can work out really, really cheap. And a freight forwarder can help you with that as well. And the third option you can get a freight forwarder to help you with is train freight. You can actually get your products put on a train and shipped all the way from China directly to you. Again, still takes quite a long time, but it can work out very, very cheap. 
So these are the ways you can get your uh, products shipped to you. And using a freight forwarder really is the best option because they can organize all of the shipping. They can even sort out all of your customs forms, make sure you're paying the right import fees and make sure your product doesn't get lost and look after it every step of the way, all the way from China directly into your Amazon account. So we've got your products shipped into Amazon. So how do we get them to sell? Well, um, this is a whole other topic, right? Let's say we've got the products shipped from Alibaba all the way into your Amazon account and um, they're sitting there. They've gone live for sale. Does this mean we're instantly going to make five or 10K a month in sales? Unfortunately not. Right? In fact, marketing and getting your products to sell is really one of the most complex parts of uh, the business um, for, for newbies. And it can be overwhelming but if you know just a few tweaks to make, um, it can be really quite simple and uh, effective as long as you know the right strategy. So when it comes to marketing your products, there's really three main strategies you need to put into place to get your products to sell consistently. If you understand these three strategies, you're going to win. So number one, strategy number one is creating an amazing listing. So the listing for your product on Amazon really is um, the one thing that customers use to decide whether they're going to buy the product or not. If your listing's good, you make the sale. If the listing's bad, your product will never sell. Because if you think about it, when customers on Amazon are looking to buy a product, they can't see it or touch it in person. If it's a piece of clothing, they can't try it on. Um, they can't see how heavy it is or um, see how good quality it is by holding it in their hand. They can't try it out and see how good it is functionally. All they have are the pictures and the text on your listing to figure this stuff out. So really we need incredible pictures, very high resolution with lots of detail, text on some of the pictures explaining you know, what each part of the product does, all the benefits and features. We need a title that grabs people's attention uh, we need bullet points that really hone in on the specific benefits of your product, the things that make it better than everybody else's product that you're competing with. And a really compelling description that explains why your product will benefit the customer's life if they buy it. All right, so that's your listing. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two is sponsored advertising. So sponsored advertising are those little ads you see in the Amazon search results when you're looking for something to buy on the platform. And it says sponsored next to the listing. So these sellers have actually paid Amazon to get their listing right to the top of the search result and appear on page one. So you can actually set like a daily budget for your sponsored ad and pay to get your product right at the top of the search results. So uh, customers click on your listing and actually buy the product. Now this is a really, really, really powerful way to get sales from day one when you send your products in to Amazon. And it's great because you only pay when the customer clicks on your advert. And the third strategy you can use to get sales is promotions. So you can actually give your products away for a discount using Amazon's own vouchers or vouchers from an external uh, site. And you can do a discount temporarily to maybe 50 or 100 customers or something, give your products away for free. And what this will do is because Amazon is seeing so many sales of your product, it will start to rise in the organic rankings and get closer to page one. So if you can get your product to appear on page one without spending money on advertising, customers will see it and essentially you'll get sales for free. So this is how you get your sales uh, to increase while enabling you to decrease your spend on marketing. So quite a lot of stuff to cover there, but uh, we covered the main strategies for how to get your product to sell uh, in as short a time as possible. So that is how you get products shipped uh, from Alibaba, sent into your Amazon account and get them to sell. As you can see, amazing opportunities here. 
uh, we saw just now a rug that's making £25,000 a month in sales and we even seen the supplier they've used to source it for a coarser of the price. So as you probably noticed the hardest part of this entire process is actually picking the product that you want to buy from Alibaba to sell on Amazon. Well fortunately with AMZ Scout um, you will actually have the tools you need to find a smash hit product that's making over $5,000 a month on Amazon. They give you everything you need, right? You can use um, the database that they have that enables you to put in the filters and find products that are gonna sell well. They also have the Pro Extension, which um, you can use to analyze the niches on Amazon and see how much sales each seller is making. And even the button that links to Alibaba, so, um, you can find the suppliers that are selling the products. Also, they actually have keywords um, that you can use using their keyword tool when you're doing your marketing and trying to figure out which keywords to put onto your listing and which keywords to put into your sponsored ads campaigns. So you can actually use that tool um, to help you get your product visible and get it to sell. So if you want to check out AMZ Scout, click the link in the description. As I mentioned earlier, it also includes a course for how to actually use the tool and find products that sell really well. So click the link in the description, grab AMZ Scout, and why don't you let me know uh, how you get on using the tool. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope it was valuable. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know uh, maybe what was your biggest insight in this video, and I'll talk to you very soon.